What's up everybody? I'm Dr. Garrett Rossi, a board certified psychiatrist making mental health content here on YouTube and various other platforms. And if you're new to this channel, I would love to make you a member of the community and see what we have to offer here. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for all the support as always. Now, last week or two weeks ago, I think it was, I started my diabolical scheme to get everybody excited about psychedelic medications, specifically psilocybin. So I did not get a chance to talk about this in the video because it was way too long and way too much information. So I'm going to dive into psilocybin versus escitalopram for depression, which is better because this was a big study in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is not known for publishing psychiatric studies, but they did publish this one and it got tons of media attention. Everybody was excited about it and everybody was kind of pointing to this as the thing that definitively proved you know, psilocybin and psychedelics are better than regular medications that we're using like SSRIs. So let's dive into it. Let's break it down. And I'm going to give you those details here in a second. Let's talk about this exciting study. So the New England Journal of Medicine, like I said, is not very known for publishing psychiatric studies. Often they see psychiatry studies as sort of like inferior, not really acceptable for their beautiful journal and very important journal. But this one really was a big deal and the editors there decided that this was a good enough study to publish in their journal. So the New England Journal of Medicine publishes this article and it's a big deal. It's picked up immediately by tons of media outlets, news outlets, etc. Everybody kind of jumped on this and it's all the way back from April of 2021 and it was titled Trial of Psilocybin versus Escitalopram for Depression. And this got a lot of attention, right? Naturally. We're now having this trial where somebody's comparing directly head-to-head, -head, or theoretically head-to-head, -head, escitalopram versus psilocybin. So this, they're reporting this, some were even reporting this as a breakthrough trial that proved that psilocybin was better than antidepressants. So let's break down this study and really try to analyze it and determine, is it really better? Did it really prove that psilocybin is better than traditional antidepressants? Did it really prove much of anything? It's hard to say, and I'm going to give you all that right now. When we look at the study design, the first thing that stands out is that this was a randomized controlled trial, which is good because as I've said in previous videos, randomized controlled trials are the highest level of evidence in science, or at least in medicine. We always want randomized controlled trials to tell us what is going on and whether or not something is effective or not effective, and whether it beats placebo or doesn't beat placebo, or whether it beats one medication over another, etc. So the first thing that stands out to me is that there were 59 participants in this study. So there's only 59 participants. And right away, anything that's less than 100, I'm starting to think it's probably underpowered right from the beginning, right? So I, I'm not exactly able to say that this data that we get from here is going to be generalizable to my patient populations. And I'm not really sure it's going to be generalizable to anybody because we really don't have enough participants to say that. So it's underpowered, first thing to note. Now these participants that were in the study had moderate to severe depression, and what they wanted to do, these investigators wanted to do, is they wanted to compare psilocybin to escitalopram over a six week period. So six weeks is, is somewhat standard for a lot of randomized controlled trials. They usually last you know, four to six weeks or six to 12 weeks, somewhere in that range. Generally difficult to carry out trials much longer than that. So we already know it's underpowered, it's uh, too small to probably show a real difference when you're comparing these medications. So you're not really going to be able to say like psilocybin is better than escitalopram here because you simply don't have enough participants. Now the way the study worked was people received either psilocybin, 25 milligrams, for a total of two doses, three weeks apart, along with a placebo, right? The placebo being whatever was taking the place of escitalopram, so some type of sugar pill or something like that. And the other group received escitalopram and they received one milligram of psilocybin three weeks apart. And you might be saying, why would they give the person one milligram of psilocybin, uh, you know, in the same way that they were giving the other patient participants who were taking the full 25 milligram dose. And that's because they wanted to kind of make this uh, randomized controlled trial, meaning that nobody knew what they were getting, like the participants shouldn't have known they were on psilocybin, but this is notoriously hard to do with psychedelics, it's notoriously hard to do 
with ketamine because when you give people these drugs, they know they're on the drug, right? There's nothing fancy about it. You could tell the difference between taking an antidepressant and taking a psychedelic drug. So it doesn't really work. And even in this case, I doubt that that was really all that helpful, right? One milligram of psilocybin probably would be relatively uh, ineffective to cause any significant changes in the person's feelings of well-being or mental status, right? And on top of this, they provided psychological support. So this is a big thing, right? Psychedelic assisted psychotherapy. So they pr provided this psychological support throughout the, tr throughout the six week trial to both groups. So both groups were same, received the same type of psychological support. And like I said, they broke it down on the psilocybin group versus acetylopram group. And they used a 16 item scale to track depressive symptoms. So they were using sort of a screening scale to track whether or not the person was improving with the treatment. I'm gonna talk about the results here now, and I wanna just make two quick points. One, when we define something as a response to a medication, we're generally saying that the person had a, or participant had a 50% reduction in their symptoms. That's usually how we define a response. And if they had remission, obviously remission means complete remission of all symptoms. They were asymptomatic by the end of this six week trial. Now, response occurred in 70%, 70% of patients or participants in the psilocybin group and 48% in the acetylopram group. So it wasn't actually really that bad. There was a response that was quite actually quite similar in both groups, 70% versus 48%. You might say, well, Dr. Rossi, that seems like a huge difference. And yes, it, it is a difference. But when you break the, the statistics down and you do a statistical analysis on it, it's not as significant as it otherwise might seem. So what about remission? Because what you really want to know is what I would really want to know, right? If I'm going to take a psychedelic or I'm going to prescribe a psychedelic, I really want like bang for my buck, right? I want to make sure this is going to change my life and that I'm going to be free of the symptoms that have been causing these debilitating results day in and day out. Remission occurred in 57%, 57% of the psilocybin group and 38% of the acetylopram group. So again, like a fair number, of, you know, about a third or so of the people taking acetylopram remitted and a little over half remitted in uh, when they were given psilocybin. And the conclusion basically that the authors came up with were that the changes in the depression score, and they were using this QIDS SR16, so you can look that up if you're interested. That's the scale they were using to measure the person's depressive symptoms at week six did not show a significant difference in antidepressant effects between psilocybin and escitalopram. So the authors concluded that after doing all this work and having these 59 participants take this medication, coming up with this really fancy study, that um, it really wasn't that much of a difference in terms of the effects of psilocybin and, and versus escitalopram. So you're not really able to say here definitively that psilocybin was significantly better than escitalopram at treating depression. As we search for more innovative strategies to treat depression, and when I'm thinking about what I'm looking for as a physician in new depression treatments, I don't want things that are going to prove to be as good as the current standard of care, right? I don't want something that says like psilocybin's as good as escitalopram. I want interventions that are going to crush the current standard of care, right? I want interventions that are going to relieve people of their depressive symptoms fully, right? Not just give us a response. It's important to note that both the response and remission rates were higher in the psilocybin group versus the group receiving escitalopram. But again, these differences were, were relatively small, not really even big enough to say definitively that there's a significant difference between the two medications. And as I've already pointed out, blinding these studies is notoriously difficult, right? Notoriously difficult to, to, to get people because they can feel the difference. They know the difference when they're taking a psychedelic drug or a dissociative anesthetic or an empathogen or any of these other drugs that we're now starting to explore. So blinding can be really difficult because people are generally able to predict what arm of the study they're in, which isn't really helpful when you're trying to have a randomized controlled trial. And this bias, the bias on the part of the patient, knowing that they're taking psilocybin, could also favor the results of the psilocybin group as well. So it could falsely elevate the results of the psilocybin group because they know they're taking the psychedelic drug. So 
There's a lot of holes here, a lot of problems. Um, what we can conclude here is, I guess, psilocybin is relatively safe, at least over that six week period of time. There were no adverse events and no suicides or anything like that in the study. And we can also conclude that more research is needed and we need larger sample sizes and bigger randomized control trials, not only to prove that psilocybin is safe, but to prove that it's effective and that not only is it effective, but it beats the current standards of care that we have available to us for the treatment of depression. With that said, I'm going to hold it there. You guys have any questions or comments, please drop them below and I will try to get to them. It's been notoriously difficult for me to get to questions recently, super busy, but I will try my best. And thank you guys for watching. Please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already.